Turn in your Bibles to the Gospel of John, John chapter 4. John chapter 4, we're going to go, we're not through this chapter yet. <clears throat> we kind of want to go back and hit on something we read last week. John chapter 4, the Gospel of John. If you're over in 1 John, 2 John, or 3 John, you, uh, you've gone too far to the right. You need to make a left-hand turn and go back a little ways. Uh, the Gospel of John chapter 4. So I wanted to mention something uh, to you. I'll, I'll announce it again Sunday morning. But uh, the newspaper contacted uh, us last week, and uh, Keisha said they wanted to uh, come and present us with an award and get my picture. And I tried to get her to get her picture, and she says she's out of town or something like that. Uh, and I tried to get Roger to get his picture, and he was out of town. Uh, so, uh, but anyway, and we didn't know what kind of award it was. But apparently, for the last several weeks or a couple months, I guess, if you uh, get the paper, then you know they were having the uh, the best of Franklin contest uh, in the newspaper. <clears throat> and I think she told me there's over 100 categories, but it's like the best restaurant, best place to get your oil change, best place to visit, best place to shop. I don't know what all the categories were because I don't get the newspaper. Uh, but the award that she and uh, the citizens of the county sent in their votes for each of these categories. Uh, and so she come to present uh, Liberty Baptist with the award of the best church in Franklin County. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <clears throat> yeah, we praise, we praise the Lord for that and we're thankful. And so we, we also took out a uh, quarter page ad to be able to thank the citizens of the county for that vote uh, in, uh, in picking us to be uh, the best church in Franklin County. So to God be the glory. Amen. Amen. All right. So John chapter 4, if you'll stand with us in reverence and honor to the reading of God's Word, we do that not to get you in some calisthenics and stretch your legs and prevent blood clots and, and help your cardiovascular health, but we do that because uh, that's what they did in the Bible. They stood at the reading of, the God's, of God's Word in Nehemiah and in Ezra. So John chapter 4 verse 35 says this, Say not ye there are yet four months, and then comes the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. Now, what Jesus is speaking of, the fields being the world. We look upon the world, uh, and uh, he says that the, 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 that the world is white, uh, ready for harvest. Verse 36, And he that reapeth receiveth wages, and gathereth fruit unto life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth, Did it change? There we go. Uh, and herein is that saying is true, one soweth and another reapeth. Uh, I sent you to reap that whereon ye bestowed no labor, and other men labored, uh, and ye are entered into their labors. Uh, and so may God add the blessing to the reading of his word, and you may be seated. Uh, the Lord here is speaking again of uh, sowing and reaping. He has done this before. Uh, and uh, we, we see it again uh, in this text. And so I want you to think today, on, or tonight, just on this simple thought on principles of harvest. Principles uh, of the harvest. Now, the, uh, the law of, uh, uh, there, in the natural world, there is a law of sowing and reaping. Uh, and what you're going to find is that everything that applies in the natural world and the laws of sowing and reaping God uses it and, and, and it applies directly to the spiritual world as well. And that's what Jesus does here. Uh, and so, uh, so we're, we, I just want us to look at some principles of the harvest tonight when we think about sowing and reaping, uh, particularly uh, as a church. Uh, so number one, I want you to notice this. I want you to know that there's always a season for sowing. There's always a season for sowing. Now, I know most, uh, if you're talking about gardens and planting stuff, that uh, most of the time that's in the springtime. There's all kinds of fall and cool weather crops that you can plant. Uh, Lord willing, I'm going to, uh, I think it's still going to be warm enough here in Georgia and enough light, but I'm going to plant some kale and some collard greens. Uh, and uh, I guess I'm just going to probably feed the deers what the end result's going to be. Uh, but I'm hoping the deer will leave me just enough to salvage and to be able uh, to harvest it. Uh, but there's always a season for sowing. Always a season for sowing. Now, what is Jesus talking about here when he's talking about those that sow and those that reap? Is he talking about seed uh, like kale, collards, corn, beans, stuff like that? 
No, he's not talking about sowing that kind of stuff because remember Jesus is now taking the laws of the natural world and applying them to the spiritual world. He's talking about sowing the seeds of love and grace and mercy and most importantly sowing the seed of the gospel. But we do that by sowing love, grace uh, and mercy. So he's talking about the gospel. So there's always a season for sowing or planting, if you will. Uh, And the... Uh, generally, when we think about our garden, we're thinking about springtime. There's a season, a certain season. I, now, and I don't know down here when you can plant. Those of you who uh, grow gardens and stuff, you know how early that you can plant. You know when the last frost is going to be. Down here, it's much earlier than it is up home. Up home, we can't really plant anything until after May 8th because we can have good frost at May 8th. We have had them much later. We have had great big snows. We had 15 inches one time around May 15th. Uh, and so uh, it's different. There's a different time, a different season, depending on where you're at. But there's always a certain season for sowing. So I want you to listen just a minute. In people's lives, when you look upon the world and you look at folks around you in people's lives, you need to be keenly aware and keenly sensitive to the Spirit of the Lord uh, as you live day to day following the Lord because th- there will be people around you, there are certain seasons in their life when it is a planting season, when it is a sowing season. And you need to watch for that, and you need to be keenly aware for that. Uh, One writer, he talked about seasons of life, uh, and uh, and he spoke of things like uh, uh, graduating college or getting married or having a child uh, or losing a loved one or or going through a... uh, uh, going through a sickness or an illness or uh, some kind of uh, some kind of accident or some kind of injury or going through a divorce, whatever the case may be, but there are seasons of life uh, that uh, that are planning seasons. These are opportunities that we must seize when people's hearts are more tender, when their hearts are more receptive, and, and that's the whole key about sowing. Uh, you can't go out here, because Jesus gave a parable about this. Well, you can't go out here and just throw seed on the hard ground and expect that seed to grow. Now, it's amazing how weed seed grows anywhere, anytime, under any condition. But if you're wanting to grow something uh, that's worth heart worth harvesting, uh, then, uh, then you've got to prepare that ground. Uh, we were home a day or two last week, had a lot of work to do, and I, and I come through my old garden spot there, and, and of course, uh, there's not been a garden there since we come to Georgia, so that's grown up. Most of it's crabgrass, but it's mowed very neatly. It's neatly mowed crabgrass, uh, but I, I can't go there uh, this spring and just grow a garden. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to har up that ground. I'm going to have to plow that ground up, run the hars over it, and, uh, and get it prepared and get it ready for when that season comes that I can sow that seed. And listen, that's the way it is in people's lives. Uh, There are certain seasons that people's hearts get prepared to receive that love, grace, and mercy, and the gospel, Jesus, that you'd sow into them, and that that their heart would receive that seed. And so we've always got to be aware that there are seasons for sowing. There are seasons for sowing, and take take, uh, advantage of those seasons. So number two, we must uh, sow or there'll uh, never be a harvest. We must sow or there'll never be a harvest. Some people are expecting a harvest and some churches are expecting a harvest. Sadly, some churches are not ever expecting a harvest, but some churches are. And some people are expecting harvests, but they never sow. Uh, and so you have to sow in order to, uh, in order to, uh, uh, to, to be able to participate or to receive a harvest. And if you don't sow, uh, I promise you this, I've got two raised beds over here, uh, eight by eight raised beds, and if I don't sow something in those raised beds, there's nothing going to come up, nothing but weeds. I may have an old volunteer plant uh, come up here or there, whatever the case may be, but nothing of any value or substance uh, if I don't sow. And so we have the seed and we have to sow if there's ever going to be a harvest. Now, here's what you need to understand is don't ju- at the end of every day, don't judge how, what the harvest is. Don't judge how much or how little harvest you have, but judge each day by how much seed you've sown along the way. And see, that's where some people get dis, uh, uh, discouraged is they're, they're, they're trying to see the harvest uh, that's in their life uh, that, uh, that they have been able to, uh, to collect or to gather 
Uh, but uh, the principle of sowing and harvesting means this. I may not get the harvest, but I can sow every day. I can sow every day. Uh, and I remember one time, uh, one of my deacons called me and he said, listen, we got to go see this man. Uh, I don't know, uh, Steve was, um, I'm guessing about 40 at the time, maybe 45, I don't remember, somewhere along, along there. But uh, he said he's never been saved. And uh, he said just a couple years ago he fell out of a tree stand and broke his back and his pelvis and he got hurt really, really bad. And we've witnessed to this man, witnessed to this man, and uh, uh, there, there's nothing. And so I said, okay, when can we go? And he said, well, let's go tomorrow evening. Well, the next day, I was getting up at 4.30 in the morning to be at work at 5.30 and uh, working a 12-hour shift. And so I wouldn't get home to 5.30 or 6 that night. And, and I knew I was going to be so tired and, and just worn out. But I said, okay, we'll go tomorrow evening. Well, come tomorrow e come the next day that evening, he called me and he said, listen, we can't go see him. He's got something to do. We're going to have to go in two or three days. I said, listen, got to work this out in his time because I knew there'd be a season. It'd be a certain season. And so we did finally get to make our way there to his house and walked in and, and had a, a good little social visit for just a, a few minutes. And then, and then I asked him about the gospel and I asked him about uh, if he'd ever been saved. And, and immediately he just, he wanted to know, he said, no, I never have, but I need to be and I want to be. Can you tell me more? And so I told him more and he asked questions and he wanted to know more. And then he asked more questions and he'd want to know more. And, and he had a sincere desire and he was, he was interested and eager. And, and so by the end of that visit, I'd led him to the Lord and he got saved and become a very, very faithful church member. He ended up teaching Sunday school. Uh, but listen, I, and I, I knew I'd never met the man before. Uh, but I knew that I had absolutely nothing to, to do with that because I knew that before me, I was simply there for the harvest. Uh, and I knew before me that there was people who had sown and sown and sown and sown. Some of the people that had sown, they had died already and gone on to the Lord, so they never saw this harvest. Uh, maybe the Lord let them see it on the other, from the other side of eternity. Uh, but I knew I didn't do anything but simply just walk into the field and take the harvest because others had sown and planted and watered, and I just got to be there for the harvest, and God gave uh, the increase. And so we've got to remember that as we're thinking about uh, with principles of the harvest that, uh, that we must sow or there'll never be a harvest. And I want to tell you this, listen to me. Had, had, I, had everything played out just exactly like that that night and I strolled in uh, I, and I had been the first one to ever sow into that man's life or I had went there tried to take the harvest, tried to reap the harvest that night, I already know there would have been no harvest that night. But because somebody had sown, I was able to harvest. And so thank God, uh, thank God for that. Uh, number, number three, and this is a, this is a Bible truth, uh, but I want, I want to, I want to share something, uh, with you about this truth. But number three is this, is that we reap what we sow. We reap what we sow. Now there's a negative connotation to that. We've been taught it, uh, our whole life. I remember one time my daddy telling me that very thing, uh, trying to get my young crazy mind straightened out. Uh, and so there's a negative connotation to that. But, but listen, we're talking about the gospel here and the principles of the harvest. And so we reap what we sow. So you reap bitterness. I mean, you sow bitterness, you reap bitterness. You sow anger, you'll reap anger. But, but, but we're talking about grace, sowing love, grace, and mercy, and sowing the gospel. And if we sow love and we sow grace and mercy into people's lives uh, and we sow the gospel, uh, then we will reap. Uh, the fruits of everlasting life in the souls and lives of those we sow in. So you always keep in mind, you'll, you will reap what you sow. And so that's why we are to always sow grace uh, and sow mercy uh, and sow love and sow kindness uh, and sow the gospel into people's lives uh, because you'll always reap what you sow. Now, uh, last spring I planted some, uh, uh, I planted some burpless cucumbers I may be the first person to ever done what I'm about to tell you. I don't really know. Uh, I would imagine I, I am. Uh, but I sowed some, uh, I planted some burpless cucumbers. I like those. Uh, and I trellis my cucumbers. Some of you do the same thing. Keeps them off the ground, keeps the airflow better. They don't blight as bad and all that kind of stuff. And, and the fruit's really good. So you just go on that trellis and you just pull those cucumbers off. Well, I noticed that uh, when the cucumbers were starting to grow, that there was one cucumber that, it just didn't really look like cucumber. It was like a round cucumber. It started to kind of get a little oblong and a little round. And I thought, that's just an odd 
deformity of this cucumber. Something's wrong with it. Uh, and so I just left it, and I just noticed as it grew and it grew, it just kept getting more round and more round and then bigger and then bigger. And I had, uh, they had got cantaloupe plants mixed in with my birthplace cucumber plants. And so I had trellised cantaloupes. And I just want you to know, you can do it. The vine will hold, and they will grow on a trellis. Uh, so it's very interesting for your cantaloupes, but it grew, uh, I, grew se- I grew several cantaloupes. And I was just thinking, Lord, please, I don't want any professional gardener to come by here and see that I have trellis cantaloupes because they're going to think we do things crazy in North Carolina. But it worked, and if I had to ever plant cantaloupes, I'm going to plant uh, cantaloupes, and I'm going to trellis them because uh, it keeps them clean and all that stuff. But see, I, I reaped exactly what I had sown. I just didn't know I had sown cantaloupes. I thought it was all the birthless cucumbers. And so this is why we have we must be in, intent and focused and deliberate in sowing grace, love, and mercy into people's lives and the gospel. Because if we sow the gospel through these things, uh, then we will be able to harvest uh, the fruits of eternal life in the lives of men and women that we sow into. So number four also uh, is this, uh, that sowing and reaping implies a weight or patience, if you will. It implies a weight or patience, if you will. And, and uh, Paul really uh, kind of uh, implies this in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, I think verse 6, where he talks about how I planted Paul's water, but God gave the increase. And so he's kind of laying out this, this chronology or this timeline that there's planting and then there's watering uh, and then you wait uh, for the harvest. Uh, and so uh, sowing and reaping uh, implies that there's always this, this time, this waiting period, if you will, uh, for uh, those seeds to grow into, uh, into salvation. Uh, or into uh, everlasting life in the hearts of men and women. I'm the world's worst. When I plant stuff in the garden, almost from day one, I know, I know it takes, depending on the seed, it takes 7 to 14 days for some seed to germinate and begin to poke through the ground. I know all that. But when I plant every single day, I'm down there walking the rows, looking, 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 because I just want to see uh, as soon as the first little uh, bit of green begins trying to poke out of the ground and come up. And then when it comes up, I'm still down there every day because I want to watch it grow just a little bit more uh, at a time. Uh, but the laws of harvest, the principles of harvest, uh, it implies that there is this waiting period between the sowing uh, and the harvesting. Uh, and so we, we've got a, and, and I see that in a church setting many, many times because I'll see somebody come and start visiting and start visiting and start visiting. Uh, and I know, I know that, uh, that eventually if they keep coming long enough, we're just going to preach the word. We're going to sing Jesus. We're going to testify of Jesus. Uh, and we're going to preach the gospel. And I know that eventually if they'll keep coming and, and we have sown enough of the right seed, uh, that uh, there's going to be a harvest in their lives. Uh, and we've just got to be patient in the meantime uh, and not get discouraged and not give up and give uh, and get down and out about it. Uh, so uh, remember, now, the harvest is the Lord's, and so we need not fret if we don't see the harvest uh, as soon as we have sown something, but we've got to give... Uh, we got to give it time. I remember one time a preacher friend of mine preached a revival for me, and it was just a phenomenal revival. It ended up going on for about three weeks, but... Uh, he would come in and, man, he would just preach. I mean, he would preach like he's on fire, the gospel of Jesus. And, and, and it would be the best message you've ever heard. And, and I mean, he preached heaven down and uh, hell hot, heaven sweet, and, and the Lord was all around that place. And, and then it would come time for invitation, uh, the invitation to be given, and I would give an invitation and nothing, nothing at all. Well, it didn't bother me because I knew that he had preached the word and he had sowed that night and he had planted that night um, and I knew the, the principles of the harvest. And he, and he did all that with the anointing of the Lord. I knew that there'd be a harvest to come. And so we would come back for the next two nights and there wouldn't even be preaching those next two nights uh, because when the, the choir, special singers started singing, the Lord would begin moving and, and those lives where the gospel had been sown the night before began coming and giving their hearts and lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. So for the next two nights, we'd see people saved. 
And then he'd get to preach again on that fourth night. That, uh, that fourth night. Uh, and I would get up and give an invitation. And there'd be nothing. There'd be nothing. It didn't, it didn't discourage me at all. But it was not your typical revival response to give an invitation and for nobody to come after a man had just stood and preached his heart out. But I knew that the way it was preached and what was preached, that there would be a harvest. And we'd come back the next two nights and there'd be no preaching at all, only singing. And souls would be coming and being saved because uh, I knew there's, there's, a, there's a waiting period between when you sow seed and the harvest. And so always keep that in mind because here's the deal. Sometimes you're going to sow some seed and you will never in your lifetime see the fruit of that seed. But there will be a harvest one day. I think it's uh, one of the Wesleys, one of the Wesley brothers had a son uh, that they had prayed for and when, uh, when uh, the older Wesley died and left that son, that son ended up getting saved when he was about 80 years old when dad had prayed and prayed and preached and preached and sown and sown and planted and planted, and he never saw that harvest. But when he died, years and years later, that son got saved before he died. And so there's always this waiting period. And so uh, number five, number five, we always, here's the exciting thing, we always reap more than we sow. Now, I found, a, I found several different writers that, that were writing about this principle, and they would say that we... They said that we reap proportionately to that which we have sown. But if you've ever grown a garden, you know you do not reap proportionately to what you have sown. You know you always reap more than you have sown. Now this is very exciting when you think about sowing the gospel. So you plant when you plant corn or bean, what, or bean whatever it may be. Uh, when you plant that bean seed you do not get one bean seed in return. That's proportionate. You do not get one bean seed that comes up and hangs on the end of a, of a vine. Uh, no, when you plant one bean, there's this vine comes up that grows whole beans on it with many uh, bean, uh, beans in, within that pod. Uh, and there's many pods all over that, uh, that bush or that vine, whatever kind of uh, bean that you're growing. Uh, and so you always reap more than you sow. I remember one year, and I don't know why, but I planted a certain, just one or two, uh, one or two beans of a certain kind of bean. I wanted to see what it was. And I just planted two at the most. And they come up and they grew and I, uh, they were some kind of pole bean. And so I, I'd fa fashioned a little trellis there where I could just uh, watch it grow and see what was going to produce off of it. But, but there was just a, a whole bag full of beans come off of that from those two little seeds. And so you always reap more than you sow. And that's exciting when you put the spiritual, uh, you put, put the spiritual application to that. And that means that we need to sow, 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 sow every day. We need to sow love, mercy, grace, and the gospel of Jesus Christ because there's going to be harvest from that. And here's how this works. <coughs> Excuse me. Not COVID. That's allergies. It's, I got it going on in the back of my throat. That's not a lung cough. That's a tickle throat cough. Somebody give it to me, I think. But anyway, uh, so here, and here's how this works. Think about this now. Think about this. So you sow the gospel into somebody's life and that individual gets saved. Now you're sowing the gospel. You sow the gospel into one person's life and that individual gets saved. And if that individual does what he's supposed to do in the Lord, he or she's supposed to do in the Lord, and they live according to these principles of harvest and they live their life sowing, 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 how many people are they going to win to the Lord in their lifetime? And then how many people are they going to win to the Lord? See, the, the principle of harvest in, in, in that we reap more than we sow, see, this reaping and sowing or sowing and reaping, it, it follows the laws of multiplication. It's not just addition uh, or equal proportionately, uh, but it's multiplication. We get far more than we sow. So that also tells, us that as a, that tells me that as a church, and we need to be sowing, 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 planting, 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 planting in the lives of the men and women in this community and children in this community around us. Because listen, and, and many people, many people have the wrong attitude. Many people, many churches, they want to do that so they can get more people here and fill this building up and then they can inflate their numbers and, 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 and talk about their numbers. But listen, if you've got a true heart for sowing and planting and then reaping, 
uh, then, then you don't care who or where they are reaped at, where the gathering takes place at. You just want to sow because we're trying to grow the kingdom of God, not our church. We're trying to grow God's kingdom. I hope they come here, and I hope they fill this church up, and I hope this church runs over. And I hope we go back to an 830 service because the church gets so big. But the, the important thing is, is we win them to the kingdom of God and win, win them for him. And so uh, that's, the, that's the fifth principle of, uh, of, the, of the harvest is that we reap more than what we sow. Now, uh, number six is this. Also, watch this. So to begin with, I said there's always a season for sowing. Number six says this, there's also a season for reaping. Now, in church life, I can tell you that uh, you may not know it and you may not notice it, uh, but I notice it uh, as pastor because I can see the very seasons of a church goes through. I see that there are seasons of harvest. I see there are seasons of sowing. I see there are seasons of breaking up fallow ground. I see there are seasons of, of getting the ground ready. And then I see there are seasons of sowing. And then I see there's seasons of watering, caring for that, that uh, seed as it grows and as it, as it springs up into a, a plant that's about to give forth fruit. And then there are seasons of harvest too. And, and I see that. And there's some, some people who, some pastors who sadly think that just because you don't see somebody saved every service that something's wrong, something's going on. Uh, but you don't go to the garden every day and harvest something. There's seasons for harvest. And, uh, and uh, those are exciting times. I, I love, there's nothing I love better uh, than, uh, than plowing potatoes out of the ground. We grow a lot of potatoes up home because and, and we have an environment where we can keep potatoes through the whole year. We can store them through the, the whole year and the next spring, late into spring, June, uh, even up to June, we can still be eating potatoes from last year. So we used to grow a lot of potatoes, and nothing as exciting to me as plowing those potatoes out of the ground. I mean, that's less, I don't know, there's something about that uh, that just absolutely excites me. But listen, you don't do that all the time. Sometimes there's a season of planting them, and then that whole season of caring for them, nurturing them, those potato plants and so forth, uh, and, uh, and then you get to do the harvest. So there, uh, there's always a season for, uh, for reaping. Now, when I say that, let me say this. If there's a season for sowing into people's lives. This is times in their life when their hearts are more receptive to what you're going to say. So when people run to you for advice, hold your tongue for a moment before you start rattling out the best Facebook quotes you've seen or the best Instagram quotes, whatever it may be. So just hold your tongue just for just a moment and think. Now they've come to me with a need in their life. I've got an opportunity here to plant some gospel seed, to tell them about Jesus. And so there's a season for sowing, but there's also a season for harvesting, and you've got to know that season. You've got to be ready for that season. When that time comes around, when a conversation comes up, you know, there's, there's, a, there's times when people are looking and searching for much, much more. I'll never forget one time, and I did. I wasn't in the right place myself because I was just religious, but I wasn't uh, born again. But I was very religious. But um, a good buddy of mine, uh, Sergeant Daniel Price, we we come out one morning to uh, uh, to fall in formation after we had PT that morning, and uh, we were about to get our uh, jump, uh, or what we call our chalk status, the the order we're going to be jumping on the jump that night. And I never remember, he and I come out there first and nobody else was in that whole uh, courtyard in between the barracks. And he, for some reason, initiated a conversation with me. Of all people, he initiated a conversation with me uh, about the Lord and about church uh, and about eternity. And I, like I said, I was just religious. That's all I was at the time. Or wasn't even religious, but I would have called myself that if you had asked me. But... Uh, I don't even remember what I said. I just remember it was a very short conversation, and it struck me funny that he brought it up. And, uh, and I didn't really have answers. I didn't know what to say and all of that. Uh, and I did not know that, uh, that about 3 o'clock that afternoon that there would be a great tragedy called the Green Ramp Tragedy take place, and he would die, and he would be dead, and I would never see him again. And I wish to this day that I had been where I needed to be. I wish I would known the Lord like I needed to 
so I could have said something to him, but there are seasons of harvest. Don't miss those opportunities. When people are ready, when people are open, when people are receptive, and people are talking about the things of the Lord. And you take, you take advantage of that opportunity. There's always a season uh, for reaping. Uh, and so lastly, number seven, I close with this, <coughs> excuse me, is that the harvest is the Lord's. So you write that down because the harvest is the Lord's. We may sow, listen, we may work ourselves into a frenzy, into a sweat, sowing and planting and sowing and planting, sowing and planting. And, 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 we may, uh, and we may wait, we may be patient, we may be patient, we may be patient. We may water and we may water and we may water and we may water. But if the Lord doesn't give the increase, then there is no harvest. See, the harvest is the Lord's. I think sometimes about times I've led people to the Lord. <clears throat> and I think about times that it's just almost literally been within one sentence or two. And they give their life to the Lord. And I, and I, and I was like, Lord, I know that's not me. I, I didn't even say anything. I barely did anything. Uh, but you stepped in and you convicted them and drew them and you led them to you. And so, Lord, it can't be me, but it, it's all of you. And then there's been times when I knew that somebody was there and needed to be saved in a service or whatever. And I've got down and I've prayed, Lord, I've preached the gospel, the choir, the singers, they sung about Jesus and lifted Jesus up. And that man, that woman, they're standing there lost right now needing you. And Lord, if you don't do something, nothing can be done. They will never be saved, Lord, if you don't do it. You do the saving, Lord, and we'll give you credit for it. And then they come and then they get saved. See, salvation is of the Lord. It's all of the Lord. We are but just servants uh, in his hand. Uh, it's kind of like this. Uh, I got a glove I had a pair of gloves in the door of my truck and lost one of them somewhere, so now I have a glove, and that's about the most useful th useless thing you could ever have is a glove. You kind of need a pair. But I was looking at that glove the other day, and I thought about our lives and the Lord. And see, we're kind of like that glove. That glove's useless laying there by itself, but what it needs is it needs a hand in it, a hand that's strong, a hand that's able, a hand that can move fingers and work and function and all of that. And that glove is only useful if it's got a hand in it operating. And that's the way we are. We're only useful if God moves within us and uses us uh, to sow, to plant, to water, and to reap uh, the harvest that is in the, in the world. Uh, and so let me remind you what Jesus said. He said, don't say the harvest is going to take place in four months. But he said, the harvest is ready. The fields are white with harvest. Uh, and he says, and we read again, where he says, So pray ye to the Lord of the harvest. The harvest is the Lord's. He said, Pray to the Lord of the harvest that he would send laborers to go into the fields. And so that is to be what we are to pray. That needs to be on your prayer list, is that you pray, Lord, don't... Here's what we, we're, we're not asking, and this is not what the Lord instructed we're not to pray, Lord, fill liberty up. Lord, send us a bunch of people to liberty. No, the Lord didn't say that. The Lord didn't say that. He said, pray to the Lord of the harvest that he would send us laborers, laborers to go out into the fields because the fields are white with harvest. And so we're going to have opportunity and opportunities, and you have them every day as you live your life in Franklin County, wherever you go day to day, uh, to, uh, to be a laborer for Jesus Christ. The principles of the harvest, sowing and reaping are exciting things in the Word of God as we read and study God's Word. And it ought to excite us to know that we can be a part of God's great plan. We can be a part of the great commission by faithfully sowing and reaping as He leads us in these principles of harvest. If you will, stand with us. So you be praying for Sunday morning, our service already. Invite somebody. You know somebody's got need in their life. Hey, invite them here. And I've always said this, that if you will invite them, listen, our singers, 
those that lead worship, they're going to lift up Jesus. And when it comes preaching time, whoever stands in this pulpit, they're going to preach Jesus. And so if you just get them here, we're going to sow, and we're going to plant, we're going to water into their lives, and God will give the increase, and we'll give him glory for it. So tell somebody you love them, and we'll see you here Sunday morning. Love you, Liberty.